In the gospel today, we hear about the city of David. And Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. David was a shepherd. He was tending the sheep. And he became the great king of Israel. Samuel is called by God to anoint David as the great king of Israel. David was hidden away by his father, Jesse. Jesse had many sons. And when Samuel is told that he will anoint one of the sons of Jesse, he goes to anoint David But David is hidden away in a barn. In the midst of animals. And one by one, Jesse keeps bringing his sons to be anointed a king and Samuel says, no, not this one, not this one, not this one. They keep David hidden away because they were ashamed of him. He was, the Bible says, effeminate in appearance and his Father Jesse was ashamed of him. He wanted to keep him away from everybody. Nobody could see David. His family preferred to keep him locked up with the animals. And it is David, the shepherd boy, who is chosen to be the greatest king of Israel and from whom, from whose line we get the great Savior, Jesus Christ. Shepherds play a big role in the Christmas story. It is to the shepherds that the good news is announced first. The angel appears first to the shepherds. Now, there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. That city of David and shepherds is central to the Christmas celebration. David was a shepherd, a forgotten one, who was chosen to be the greatest king. David, who is a nobody in the sight of his family, he is worthless for his family, for his father. In the sight of the world, David is no good, good for nothing. 
only to be in a barn with animals and to tend sheep. Shepherds were the lowest class people during that time. They were drunkards. They were thieves or thought to be thieves. And they were thought to be liars. In the law of those times and in Jewish law, shepherds were not allowed to give testimony in court because their word was taught to be no good. Do you see the picture here? That word that was given to Samuel. Because Jesse was amazed. How could God want David, the shepherd? I have all these other sons. They're great looking. They're muscular, Jesse says. You know, they're smart. They're intelligent. They're the best of the best. And you want David, the shepherd? And then God says to Samuel, the ways of God, my ways, are not your ways. God does not think like human beings do. God doesn't see the way human beings do. God sees differently. The despised to the world is the greatest to God. What to the world, to the eyes of the world, may be forgotten, and the low to God is the greatest. Hence why God becomes human being in the form of a baby, seemingly that which is defenseless, that which has no power, has the greatest power. The ways of God are not our ways. So that's what we celebrate today. That God chooses the forgotten, the marginalized, that which is taught to be good for nothing, and raises it up. And it is to the shepherds, the ones who see themselves as worthless, good for nothing, only to be out in the hills, hidden away. You know, the shepherds were out in the hill country. They were away from everybody. They were not taught worthy to be associated with regular people. And God chooses them. The angel first appears to them. This is great news today. You know, that word is for you right now, today. It says here, for today, in the city of David. What is the city of David? The city of David is that barn. Do you understand that? It's that forgotten place, that depressed place, the place in the midst of animals. The, the city of David is that isolated place, the isolation place. Uh, let me just bring it to 2020 here. The the city of David is the time of the pandemic. Huh? The time of the virus. Today, in the city of David, a place where there is so much desperation, so much caca, so much depression, anxiety, anxiousness because of your bills, or because 
of the economy or because of a sickness or a disease or because of the problems with your children or problems at work, your employment situation, whatever it is, your marriage situation, your problem, your suffering. That's the city of David where you're hidden away and you think nobody pays attention to you, that nobody cares, that nobody loves you, nobody notices. That's the city of David. David thought nobody noticed, as did the shepherds out with their flock. They thought nobody noticed, nobody cares. And it is in the city of David, that word, there's no coincidences in the Bible. The Bible today says today, not tomorrow, today. Today belongs to God in your life. It doesn't belong to a pandemic. It doesn't belong to a virus. It doesn't belong to your bills. It doesn't belong to your loneliness or your depression. Today belongs to God. And today, in the city of David, Christ is born for you. Today. Stop thinking about tomorrow. It's got enough. Today has enough issues of its own, the Bible says. Start thinking today. Stop thinking about yesterday. It's gone. Can't change it. Today. Are you allowing the Savior to be born for you today? That's the question on Christmas. Am I allowing the Savior to be born for me today? My today belongs to God because I belong to God. And if God is with me and I am God's, no one can be against me. Nothing can do me any harm. I am not going to allow today or any day for that matter to belong to politicians or politics or fear or the news. I am not going to give my today. You see, the power is in you today. I am not going to give today to any fear, any worry, any pandemic, any disease. I'm not going to give it to my diabetes. I'm not going to give it to lupus. I'm not going to give it to cancer or anything. I'm not going to give today to my enemies To those who want to wish me harm, I'm not going to give it to those who want to bring me down, maybe even those who are in my home. And you know what that's like. People who call you names or want to, you know, ruin your day. You ain't going to let them because today belongs to God. And I belong to God. Today's the city of David. That's the good news, that in the city of David today is born Christ the Lord. This should be fabulous news for all of us. I don't know about all of you, but it just seems to me like, you know, Christmas isn't for all the people who have it all put together. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I... I I think about the Christmases of my life and most of them were pretty messed up. Family members fighting, my grandfather getting drunk, fights all around. I mean, you know, I'm not going to get too much into things here, but when I think of Chris the Christmases of my life, they're pretty messed up. And let me tell you, I think this 2020 Christmas is pretty messed up too. Uh-huh. Ain't it? I mean, I'm speaking here. Huh? Don't you think? It's pretty messed up. We have a pretty disordered world, don't we? Pretty messed up world, messed up lives, disordered lives, and so what? Face it accept it. It's into the disorder. 
not into where everything is perfect. It's in a stable, surrounded by caca and animals. Huh? That the Savior is born. Jesus was born in the midst of animals, you know. Uh, in the midst of donkeys. Okay, in the midst of all, I mean. And it is into this disordered world, messed up world, the shepherd's world, the city of David, that the Savior wants to be born. God wants to be born into your own messed up life. You know, you who, have, who are divorced, who have stepchildren, huh? you know, you who have all these addictions, depressions, you know, you who think, you know, how am I going to make it? It's a, it's a messed up life. There's all these people who come and say, Father, I suffer. Oh, I have all these problems, okay? Who doesn't? Welcome to the club. We all do, you know? It's called life. And into this life, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to tell you here that it isn't into the Brady Bunch life, okay? But in, it is in your life. And this is good news for me today because I've got a pretty messed up family, you know, well, I mean, you know, I could just get it. And it, it's really good news for me. I don't know about all of you. Maybe you have it all together. You've got the Brady Bunch family. You know, you have it all nice and great. Maybe that's you, okay? Great. Okay? If that's you, I feel sorry for you, okay? Because you're lying to yourself. Because everybody's got a messed up life, okay? All those people who say, my life is just so wonderful. <laughs> I mean, I feel sorry for him. Just face it, you know, stop lying to yourself. Everybody's got issues, you know. We all do. We, our families have issues, you know, your kids got issues, you know, you've got... Uh, and it is into that world that Jesus is born. For you. Why? To let you know that today belongs to him, that you belong to him, and that everything is going to be okay. That God is with you. Emmanuel. It will all be fine. So relax. You got to remind yourself of that all the time. Okay? All the time. God is with you. Everything's going to be okay. Just breathe. You'll be just fine. Your family will be fine one way or another. Your kids will be fine. Everything's going to work out. Um, speaking of David, I'm always reminded, always, about T t t telling the story of David, and I always tell this story because it really impacts me, uh, particularly because Jesus, if you read the Bible, is always associated with David. He is the David, the line of David, okay? Always. And so I always tell this story about David being hidden away, his father being ashamed of him, wanting nothing to do with him. I always tell this story. And once I'm telling this story in church, and there is a young boy with his mother sitting in church. And he begins, the young boy begins to cry during this sermon that I was given. And I notice he's crying and crying and crying. And so I thought, whoa, you know, what's going on here? Well, I gave this sermon, and afterward, when I, because during the sermon I told about David being chosen and becoming king, 
being, actually, the Bible, if you read it, you know, you, you, you'll notice that David is dragged out of the barn because he's hidden away. They have him locked up. And Samuel says, fetch him because God wants him, the shepherd one. And they go and get David to be anointed as king. And so I told this story, and afterward, the mom says to me, she comes up because I'm, I'm standing in the back, and the young boy, he comes up to me, and he kind of grabs me by the leg and is hugging me and all that. And she looks at me, and she says, you know, Father, uh, my son was crying during the mass and during your sermon and he looked at me and he says mommy is father adam talking about me is father adam talking about me he asks his mother is he talking about me because you see she tells me My husband left me and wants nothing to do with our children. He wants nothing to do with his son. He never calls. He doesn't pay any attention to him. And my son feels like his daddy doesn't love him. He feels forgotten. And when you are telling this story, he turned to me and said, is Father Adam talking about me? And then as you continued, he turns to me and he says, Mommy, I too will be a king. Mommy, I too will be a king. I too will be a king. That is the great gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the good news that we can all use today, that no matter who may be ashamed of us here on earth, no matter how hidden away we may be or forgotten we may feel we are, God remembers us. God loves you. God remembers you. And God has chosen you. God cares about you. God sees you. And God came to visit you. To be with you. And God today in the city of David. Your city of David. Says. To you. What that little boy heard in church. You too. You. You. With me. Will be. A king. Amen.